Usually in winter, amphibians hibernate, but today on the art workshop, we're gonna wake them up. Welcome to the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epling. We thank you for tuning in today on Pike TV. Uh, really excited about today's program because we're going to be looking at a couple of different styles of methods with the circle method in general to draw a frog. Um, we'll also be looking at a couple of different ways you can use the circle method to draw really easy, simple cartoon characters. I ran into uh, a viewer while actually voting recently, and the viewer explained to me that they really enjoy the show they tune in and uh, try to draw along with us here. But one of the problems they had was that some of the drawings with, that I were putting together and sharing with the, with the audience were just a little bit too complex. But that's really something that we want to address because I want everybody to participate here. And even though this method can be used to draw very complex drawings or compositions as we call them, um, the, it can also be used uh, to draw very simple, uh, basic, um, less compositionalized type drawings and that's really what we're going to look at today. At the end of the program though we will be doing a speed drawing showing you how to draw a poison frog. Um, today we really want to focus in on, on, on the circle method in general. We've touched on this many times in the show, we've talked about its usage, we've talked about all the varieties of ways you can take this method and draw basically whatever in the world you want but, but today we're really going to show you just how that is in practice. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of different things that I've brought with me today to share with you. Uh, one of those is Ed um, Emberley. Now, Ed Emberley created these books um, back in the 1970s, and his goal really for this was to create books where uh, students or anyone really can, can open this up and start drawing using basic shapes. So we'll take a look at a couple of his methods here to show you exactly what we're talking about. So. The way Ed puts his books together is that he starts out over here. So this entire line at the top you see is step by step on how to draw uh, a porcupine or a turtle or a fish or a mouse or a bird. Each um, line shows you the basic shapes that you put in sequence together in order to create the final product. Okay, This is exactly what we've been talking about all along really, using these uh, methods, a circle method, uh, to create basic shapes, you put them together like a puzzle piece, and at the end you should have some sort of a, um, a, a, a drawing or, or a representation of, of what it is that you're trying to draw. N now it can get a little more complex, and we'll look at that in a second, um, how that is com can be used as a, a little more complex method, but for the purpose of today's show though, we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible for, for the opening, okay? so. I've turned to this page here, um, had it marked already for us, and like I said in the opening, amphibians, um, uh, we're going to be looking at, at frogs in general because we're going to see exactly how we can use this method uh, to produce this guy here at the end. Um, so if you want to, grab a piece of paper at home and, and follow along with me as we put together this uh, the basic uh, frog using the circle method. Now we're just going to be following Ed's um, diagram here that he has, and I'll move it over so you can see a little better. There we go. Um, so on your screen you can see uh, the green frog here. And we're going to be basically doing that. Now for the book's purpose, each one of these is a separate, uh, a separate drawing. So, so this upside down letter D here um, is drawn again here with the two circles at the top. And at the bottom of each one of these drawings in Ed's books, you see he's drawn the shapes or symbols uh, that he's used to place on top of what he's already drawn in order to build upon that, that, that um, uh, uh, symbol or, or um, design, okay? So we're going to be drawing this on top of, um, each drawing on top of one another. So we won't be doing individual uh, steps, but we will be doing individual steps, but all together at once. I'll explain what I mean now. So, so basically we're starting out with an upside down letter D first, right? So we have this upside down letter D, just like this. So if you're following along at home, we're going to do an upside down letter D first to begin, right? Then we see that Ed has placed two circles at the top of this, one here and one here. Now we could cheat a little bit because we have Ed's book. We can look down here and see that's the eyes. We know exactly what that shape is and what it will represent later. 
Now, if you notice, he's also placed a couple more upside down letter D's, uh, uh, uppercase letter D's as the legs. So we'll do that here as well. He's placed them over to the side a little bit and you can see the line beneath the other line. So you know that this is off to the side um, of the frog on both sides of the frog. So now we have both those shapes. Now it looks like we're going into step four and he has some triangles that he's placed in the drawing. Looks like there's four of them. Um, one goes here underneath the left leg, the other underneath the right leg, and then it looks like there's two in the middle. One here and one here, okay? Let's move on now to the fifth step. Ed, for the fifth step, it looks like he's placed a mouth in there, but he's also drawn an outline around um, the top of the frog. So you can see here how this is basic shapes and then we have this filled in a little bit. So we'll go ahead now and draw this line at the top. Now this isn't the mouth, this is the line that, that makes up the body. It goes all the way around the top like that, okay? And then we're gonna draw the mouth in. And the mouth is making a frown, but most frogs are frowning by default, even when they're smiling, they look like they are. But So now we'll go ahead now for this step. And you notice that Ed has placed um, a couple of uh, eyeballs in there. So let's put a couple of pupils in the frog's eyes there. And then we've also got two little dots for the nose, one here and one there. Um, moving on, looks like Fred has two, I mean Ed has two options, uh, a croaking frog and a sleeping frog. So if you don't like the frown too much, if it's too much of a frown for you, you can have an open mouth for your frog. If it is, uh, uh, if it's okay with you, then, then you can just uh, leave it as it is. You can even draw two lines through the eyes to represent the frog sleeping. Um, these are small little ad additions that you can place on your drawing to, uh, to, to give the, the look of the character and, and have it perform different actions for you um, uh, through your drawing. So you can see now that the green, if we were to color this in, all that I'm shading in now would be, would be green, right? And the rest of the frog um, would be a separate color. Looks like I forgot the legs, uh, the top portion of the legs here, so we can add those in. So these would be green as well. So this is a simple drawing using basic shapes to put to together in a certain way and uh, construct it in a, in a certain way to, to resemble a cartoon character. And really, no matter how complex a drawing looks, all drawings are made up of simple shapes placed together in certain ways to give that effect. Now, cartoonists will go and they, they, they like to trace over their work before coloring, so if you wanted to do that, you could with a pen. And what this would do is at the end, if you wanted to color your frog, um, you know, your, your pencil lines would be erased at the end and you'd be left with a nice solid outline, almost like you're coloring in a page of a coloring book. Um, that's how cartoonists give this polished look to their work at the end. They, they go over it with a pen and, and um, get rid of the pencil lines. So we'll go ahead now and try another uh, example uh, straight from, from uh, Ed's book here. And uh, for this purpose, I guess we'll just move forward and let's try to uh, put together a dog. And we're, this has a, a few different shapes. Even though this is called the circle method, it doesn't mean that we're only using circles. Um, we're going to be using different shapes. And we'll put together the top line up here, this little dog at the top. So he has two different options at the end. You have a dog sitting or a dog begging. That really depends on how you arrange these shapes. So we're going to start out and follow uh, Ed's steps here. So first he looks like he has a, uh, a rectangle. So we're going to draw a rectangle in here. Follow along with me uh, at home and, and if, you, if you want to um, um, follow along with each one of these steps, I promise at the end that you will have something together that, that resembles uh, a dog. So now we've placed a circle at the top right of our rectangle following along straight out of Ed's um, instructions. So we'll put an oval now at the end of this circle right here. This oval connects which makes up the dog's mouth. At the tip of the dog's nose we have a triangle. This is the, uh, the nose of the dog here right at the end. Okay, uh, Looks like uh, we're going back to the letter D's for a second. Two of them. The first one we're going to place on the back of the triangle about right here. This will be colored in of course. Um, the second one is at the top of the dog's uh, head on this circle area. We're going to place it right there. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and color that in too so that we uh, can tell exactly what it what it's meant to be. All right. It looks like uh, Ed has placed a few spots on the dog. So we'll go ahead and put those in too. A few circles here. You can put as many as you want, as less as you want. It's up to you. Um, and then he's added a, a, a pupil for the eye. So we'll place that on the end. Um, then also now we've, we're looking at the tail of the dog. So this is a, just a simple shape coming out like that. If you uh, fill that in a little bit more, you can see how the tail comes out. And, and then the legs are, are back towards the end of the left side of the triangle on each side. And we have another here. And we have a dog. Now, usually dogs aren't square. I understand that. The circle method, though, these general shapes are really there for you to be able to have a framework to work in, okay? So if you wanted to go back over um, your drawing at the end, you could actually take this and start to round off certain features of your, of your um, drawing, okay? So we have... Uh, The shapes of the body now coming in more, the legs more, the belly, the back leg. And as you can see now, this looks more along the lines of a dog. So the circle method is really beneficial for artists. It doesn't matter what level you're at. It doesn't matter, um, you know, if you're a, a, a beginning artist just trying to figure out how to put these things together or if you're a, um, a seasoned artist who's been doing this for a long time. With my work, I use the circle method all the time. It's uh, something that, that I need to use in order to put drawings together. And I brought my sketchbook along with you to show you a couple of um, examples of that. Now, I'm drawing characters all the time. So uh, for this particular uh, uh, sleepy looking character here, um, the circle method played off. You can't see it. I've, I've erased these lines now, but this was a circle and an oval and another oval that I use as a framework to go on. Okay. Um, each one of these drawings um, started out with uh, the circle method, um, a large square um, or rectangle for the head. And then I've rounded off the edges um, for each one of these. So I know these are a little creepy, but Halloween just ended up, but you can, you can get an idea of how this is used. So if you look at this drawing in my sketchbook, you can see that even though this is very detailed, it looks nothing like um, this, this version of the dog. This started out using circle, an oval, and then down here was another oval, and then I filled all those areas in with the detail at the end. So now in order for us to really see how this is put together, I'd like for you to uh, go along with me in, in drawing a uh, poison um, uh, dart frog. Now these are frogs are, that are found in the uh, rainforests, okay? They are poisonous, very poisonous. If you've ever been to a zoo and you've went into the amphibian uh, um, section of the zoo and you've seen those really bright colored frogs, then you've definitely uh, seen a dart frog. Um, dart frogs are really usually really tiny tiny frogs, um, but they have a ton of poison. So get a piece of paper with me. This is the little guy we're going to be end up with down here at the bottom. What I'm going to do is this. We're going to start out. I'm going to set you up in drawing this, and then I'm going to speed draw through the detail and color. At the end, we should have a finished frog. All of the methods I'm going to be using, again, are methods that we have used all along in order to create uh, the various uh, examples we've used today. All right, so here we go. We start out with a circle. That's going to be the frog's head. Then we're going to add now a um, oval shape for the body. You notice I'm not pressing down really hard. Um, the reason for that, this will all be erased later. The only thing these circles serve as are guidelines for me, okay? Now, as you can see on the description at the bottom of your screen, the frog has many points of articulation. What that means is where there's a joint, where where um, um, the different parts of the frog will bend, uh, elbow at, at its um, uh, back in its back leg joints, things like that. These are all parts of the frog where we need to establish a circle for points of, uh, of articulation, okay? 
All right, so we're going to draw a circle here, which represents the start of this arm down to the elbow. Moving forward here to the hand, or the I'll call it the hand of the frog. Um, for that, we're going to draw multiple series of these circles. So there's another, I've got one here. Notice I'm drawing the lines coming out to the fingers. Okay, all right. Now we're going to draw a line coming down from behind the frog, and we're going to place the other, um, I call it hand, I don't know, but it's a, it's a, the part of the frog here with the with its fingers and things so we got the I see no matter what I'm drawing I, I go to the human reference for these things which is um, uh, um, probably not the best but this isn't a uh, um, a show on biology but but you get the idea so an oval here here or anatomy I should say or biology um, we're going to move this circle at the bottom of these two ovals to represent the back foot and a line coming out to the first toe, the second, and the third. Splipper, I guess, maybe. Um, the back leg, you can barely see right here behind the frog, so that'll come in right there. Now we can uh, take another look at the, up here at the top of the frog's head. Uh, this is where the eye will be, one of the eyes. Okay, notice I'm going straight from the, from the drawing here. Um, now we need to find out where the center of the head is looking up. So I draw these lines that if you've watched the show before, you know that this gives us the center part of the head. These two lines, um, almost like a basketball, if you're looking at a basketball from the side, uh, you know that this is the uh, front uh, of the head here. This is where the uh, nostrils and mouth will be. So I can uh, put that in um, after I have that established, okay? so. What we'll do is we're going to speed draw now through the process of detailing this little guy. And at the end, we will color him for you. And, the, and if you're interested in knowing what types of materials I'm using for this, uh, this is basically a giant pencil piece of uh, graphite. Okay, note there's no wood, of course, it's all graphite. Types of color I'm going to be using are um, these markers. They are actually uh, watercolor markers. You can find these at any hobby store. Um, these are great because basically you just uh, you color and then you put water to it and it looks like watercolor okay okay so it uh, looks like we have the uh, frog pretty much sketched in. Notice how now I'm uh, erasing the pencil line. I went over this with a uh, smaller pencil using the big large graphite stick in the beginning. Um, helped us to get the general shape of the frog and then we went back with the pencil, smaller pencil, and put the detail in. Now if you were watching during the speed drawing, you notice how I drew over top of my circles. So, like I've been saying all along, the circles are really there to help guide you um, to add in the detail. Now this is a very more, this is way more complex than the original stuff we started with. But even though if you look back at the stuff that we looked at at the beginning, you could see now these are all basic shapes that we just applied certain things to. Really didn't add a lot of detail to it. The shapes really just made up what the drawing was. The only detail we really placed in there was probably the nostrils even, or maybe the color if you added in green. Um, yeah, this is an amphibian based um, exercise, but we did try to dog too, just to you know warm up to the exercise. And with the dog though, you can see a little more now how the circle methods used. We started out with a very large rectangle, but we didn't use those lines of that rectangle Exactly. We, we, we put a curve to that at the end whenever we were inking over top of our pencil lines. And this is a very basic way of showing what I've done here with the poison dart frog. Starting out with that during the speed drawing, we did the basic shape of it. Uh, it wasn't anything too, uh, um, too, too out of the norm, but, but then at the end though, we went back and um, we put in on top of our framework, on top of the circles and on top of the large oval and 
the lines we use to represent arms and legs, uh, we put the detail in there. And now we're left with this after we erase, okay? Now I promised I'd be adding color and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing right now. We're gonna be putting a little bit of color to this and I, I thought about, uh, or we thought about speed drawing through this, but um, I think it'd be better for us to, um, to go ahead and, and go through this together uh, as much as we can in what time we have left anyway, okay? All right, so, so basically we're gonna be using this little uh, bowl here where I'm gonna be putting some, a little bit of water into it. That's gonna give us our, uh, um, the, the water that we need to use with our brush here to start applying this watercolor. Now watercolor you can get at, at absolutely anywhere. Water, watercolor cakes as they call them. Um, when I first started out, I, I bought every material that I used at the dollar store literally or at a dollar store not one in general but um, a place where they you know where they sell stuff for a dollar <laughs> I bought a um, watercolor set so it was the little cakes that you use you don't need anything fancy like the watercolor brushes but trust me when you're traveling with watercolor this is the the best way to go so we're gonna start out with blue like I said the the poison dart frogs are very colorful now with this it's it's really neat how this works you apply the color on and once you have it onto the paper that you're using, you go back over it with the water and uh, you, this actually will um, act, act just like watercolor would on a brush, okay? And I'll do a little area to show you what I mean. So we've colored that in and now we're going to start bringing out the color and hopefully this will work. I, I just realized I'm not using watercolor paper. That probably would help some. <laughs> But uh, you can see how the color blends in then after we start to apply the water in there. It would have definitely helped to use watercolor paper, that's for sure. So um, I guess to make up for that, we'll just uh, use regular watercolor cakes, which I've brought along with me. And you can see just how uh, more messy this actually is to use this, uh, these cakes. You have to apply this into the actual cake itself. What I mean by cake is those little blocks of watercolor. Um, and once you do that, uh, you've got a little bit of a mess on you. If you're traveling, uh, it, can, uh, it can really get messy. So, so I like to brush the markers. I mean a lot, but if you don't have watercolor paper with you available, or if you didn't start out with it, it may, it may present a little bit of a problem later. But luckily, we have the real deal right here in the form of watercolor cakes. Okay, um, I'm sure you've seen these frogs if you've been to a zoo or if you've watched any um, um, television show focusing on the rainforest. Rainforest has a huge, uh, diverse range of wildlife in it, and one of those uh, uh, one of one of those many multiple uh, species of frogs are the dart frogs, the poison dart frogs. They come in different uh, colors. They're very bright colors, red. Uh, blue, yellow, green, and um, I was lucky enough, and I've not been many times, but I've, I went to the, I think it was this, yeah, it was the um, Cincinnati Zoo, and while I was there, uh, went into the amphibian section of the zoo and saw these crazy colorful frogs, and uh, the curator there of the um, exhibit told the group that basically if you see something really, really colorful, in the rainforest, then you, you might want to make sure you have have thick socks and a good pair of boots on if you're walking around because uh, if it's colorful, it's poisonous. So um, adding this color in, you can see how I've actually started to go lighter towards the stomach, the underbelly of this frog. And um, doing that is because the underbelly is lighter. And the good thing about watercolor is the more water you add, you know, the, the, the lighter the uh, color becomes. So, so you can start out with a very thick um, color at the top, what we call a hue. We went over this, we've went over this before, a hue of a color. We start out with a very light hue of that color, and then as you progress, you get lighter and lighter, okay? So the arms of the uh, dart frog is, is um, very dark too. It's only the underbelly that, that is actually uh, lighter than the other areas and then also around the eyes and certain parts of the uh, um, the mouth and the uh, the hands of the frog. I call it hands but I'm a cartoonist, bear with me. Alright, so we're going to place this color a little bit more on here 
They're really colorful, um, really colorful um, uh, frogs, but you know, you really wouldn't want to pick one up, that's for sure. So we're going to focus a little bit more now on the back part of the frog. Now watercolor cakes are great to use. You can get sets, like I said, at um, even like any discount type stores. There's different brands you can get of this stuff. Um, they work really great, but if you're traveling with them, like I said, it could be, it could be a little bit messy. Now you can see how I've applied the first uh, coat of blue on there. Um, I have a little bit of white on my, on my tray up here. Um, and what I'm going to do is pull from that now a little bit and uh, go around the mouth area of the frog and the underbelly. Now you might say, well, why do you have to put white on there and the paper's white? Well, I had an art teacher, actually. I think uh, it, this was uh, Professor Pat Kowalik at UPIC. And I remember an assignment that I had once where we had to uh, paint in all these areas of a certain um, drawing we were doing. Um, and I had the same thought you might, some of you might have that, well, if the paper's white, you know, why do you have to add that in? And when I turned in my, um, my project, I remember that she, she held it up to the light and she could see that, you know, there was no pigment, um, or paint placed on the white areas. Um, believe it or not, even though you are using white here, this white that, that once it's placed onto the paper, it has a different shade. And you can probably see that a little bit, even on your screen. That white that, that you apply um, separates itself from, from the uh, white of the background. And that difference that you, that you have in your drawing adds to your drawing as a whole because um, you don't want to leave sections out. You just want to go ahead and finish the job at hand, okay? And you can tell, you can really tell when, uh, when that's not done correctly, okay? Now, for the eye, uh, we're finishing up our frog. We're going to actually pull a little bit of uh, a, a black in here. Um, now, you've noticed I've drawn a circle inside the eye. That's because the portion that you see at the top is darker than the bottom portion. And all the spots that you see on the frog here, those little spots, those are black as well. Um, so you can pull this. I'm going to actually use my marker for a second. And add this detail in for the eye here so you can see that a little bit better on how that's supposed to look okay all of this that we've created today is using the circle method um, if you have trouble uh, drawing um, something from looking at it uh, i really encourage you to try this method out give it a shot give it a go see what happens um, i'm pretty sure you'll like the results that you get the circle method is used like i've said by folks all over the, uh, the industry of cartooning. Um, it, it's the go-to method whenever you're designing a character, like I shared with you from my sketchbook today. It is the, uh, the way to go when you are trying to create something from nothing on a piece of paper. It helps guide you. It helps to give you a framework to work in. And believe me when I say this, I don't, I don't, I don't really care how good an artist thinks they are or how good they seem to be. Whenever you're designing something from scratch, you need all the help you can uh, with basic drawing elements. Um, it's, it's not as easy as it looks sometimes. So I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, program. I hope that you've uh, followed along. If you'd uh, uh, like to maybe have some of your artwork um, shared here on Pike TV, maybe you could uh, hop over to the holler.org and you could send, uh, send me a uh, image of the drawing that you've tried and I'll be happy to share it here on on TV um, on the next show okay so thank you so much for uh, tuning in uh, we really appreciate everyone that, that, that enjoys the show and checks out the show we hope that uh, you've had a great time today drawing amphibians and the poison dart frog and remember please if you are just just by out of chance it's a crazy world we live in walking around somewhere in Pike County and you see something like this on a tree, don't touch it, okay? Thanks so much and till next time, keep drawing.